Okay, so here I have a photo album map. And when I hit right, it shows a new photo. But if you watch the Godot spinner here, it's gonna get jank if I just keep hitting right. And the reason it's going jank and dropping frames is because these images are really big. They're like five, six megabits or something each. And I'm having to load those every time I show a new one. And that's gonna be a common problem you'll have in any game where you have big textures or big models or scenes or whatever. Loading those is gonna cause jank in your game if you don't do it smartly. So can we do better than that? Yes, check out this example. So when I press play, you can see it shows you the resources loading in the background. And then when I hit right, no jack. Everything's really, really quick and snappy. How does that work? Well, it's using Godot's cache resources. So let's look at how that works. Okay, so let's start with our dumb example. That has the jank. We're gonna optimize it. What this looks like is a texture rect. And then when I'm hitting right here, the code that's running is very simple. It's just on input. If you know I hit the right key, just load some resource and show it in the picture frames in the picture frames texture. So to optimize this, uh, let's look at this scene here called blocking cache. It's a duplicate of the scene and it's the exact same code. We're just loading the resource here, but we have this extra node called cache. And what it's doing is very mysteriously loading all the resources and putting it into this array that nobody even uses. And then if we run the scene, look, no more jank. What's going on? Because this is the same code, right? It has no idea that cache is there. What's happening is that under the hood, Godot is caching the resource. Okay, so let me explain the black magic. So when we load a resource, that resource is a reference, and then we just keep it alive by putting it into this cache here. And if you don't know what a reference is, I have a video on that and watch it. The resource gets kept alive until this node uh, exits the scene tree. And if we look at the sources of the load function, the C++ sources, we can see here that Godot itself under the hood keeps a cache of resources and that will find any resource that's in your scene tree somewhere. So that's how it's working, that's the magic. Okay, so this is a real quick and dirty way to just speed up the load times of your game. But you'll notice that if we hit play, the startup is kind of slow. So what if you want to do something like this, where when you press play, it shows you the progress. And you know, again, instant loading because we have cache resources. How does that work? Well, it's the same code again, but now we have this new cache called the multi-threaded cache. And what it does is it creates a thread and then it loads all the stuff on the background. It's emitting a signal every time it loads something saying, you know, here's the progress. And then when it's completely done, it says, emit the signal, done. And we have to use call to ferret here because this is on a thread. We can't safely just emit a signal we have to use this call to the ferret so it goes onto the event loop and, and, and safely pushes stuff. Um, and then we have to slightly modify the album code. You can just see here, pretty obvious. We have to connect to those signals and then, you know, don't do anything until we're done loading. But yeah, that is what you can do. Load this stuff on a background thread uh, if you don't wanna just show the Godot screen on startup for two minutes while everything's loading. Yeah, so that's cache resources. I use all these techniques in my game Space Bandit. Uh, so right now in the menu, I'm loading all the resources in the background. Player doesn't even realize it. So once they click go, the game just starts, no loading. And if you wanna support me, you can wishlist this game. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, thanks for watching guys.